is an awesome crowd. I love this crowd. You guys are sick. This is cool. I, 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 uh, I don't want to bring the mood down or anything, but um, uh, like a couple of years ago, I did chemotherapy. Um, no, not by choice, right? <laughs> I didn't see someone else and go, yeah, give me that, right? <laughs> but I didn't know this, right, is when you're bald, other bald guys come up to you like they're your brother. Like this bald guy came up to me, he goes, hey man, sucks being bald, huh? And I'm like, oh no, man, oh, I've only got cancer. Uh, <laughs> you're bald forever, you know. <laughs> At least I got a fundraiser, right? But he was pretty funny, most poor guys are pretty funny. He goes, um, yeah, but there's a chance that you could die. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, toupee. <laughs> that one's not bad. Hey, hey, horny tennis lady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Serve that one. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was cool. I, I, I got to, I'm fine now. I'm fine now. I'm still getting checkups a lot, but I got uh, testicular cancer. Right. Um, and I've got to keep an eye on it, but they said, Nick, we're going to have to take your testicle out. So don't worry, we can put a fake rubber one in there just to make things look a bit better. And I said to the doctor, oh, <laughs> you've seen testicles, I've seen testicles, they're not going to look any better, right? <laughs> They're like, oh, look at this disgusting dog shit on the ground. Oh, hey, let's put another one next to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that looks better. <laughs> she said, no, it can be scary if your partner goes down there and finds out you've got one testicle. I said, if there's anything more harrowing than my partner finding out I've got one testicle, it's her finding out one of them's a rubber ball. You know? <laughs> that later on turns her pelvic floor into the rear wall of a squash court. Uh... Yeah, it's good to be here. Great to see you guys. Obviously, you can tell you're a fun crowd. We'll just say back there, the energy is up and about. And you're a smart crowd. You spend your money right in this climate. You're like, what will $30 get me? Might as well have a laugh because can't get a fucking litre of petrol at that price anymore. Can we, guys? I'm ashamed to admit it, but I've realised now it's cheap for me just to buy a bag of cocaine and run everywhere, guys. <laughs> I'm a greenie, I've cut back on fossil fuels, I've loaded up on nostril fuels, guys. It's fucking unreal. <laughs> Took me 10 minutes to run here from June up tonight, ladies. Can you believe that? That's, that's efficient, right? It is pretty grim, though. In all honesty, I was filling up a BP this morning, right? I put it to pump one, and on pump two is the car of pee platers, and I saw them put $10 in the car. I was like, boys, where are you driving to? Pump three? <laughs> Fuck's sake, lads. I know what it's like to be 17. You want to pump everything but your car. Let's fucking... Well, I'm actually... I'm celebrating uh, my five-year anniversary uh, with my missus uh, tomorrow, actually. So, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, it's great. It was actually her birthday last week. She just turned 18. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know a birthday. Or <laughs> but I do love the message. She's great, a uh, uh, weird girl, big believer in ghosts and spirits, and I also believe in ghosts if you do make some noise. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I don't believe because I'm an adult. But uh, she, she believes in ghosts, right? She thinks our house is haunted. I'm like, sweetie, what ghost would haunt a one bedroom in Nalamara? You know what I mean? I don't think that's a ghost, personally. I think that might be someone overdosing in the background. You know, the sounds are weird. It's just like, oh! <laughs> like, now it's a ghost. I've got two kids of my own. Um, my two little cream pies that could. Um, <laughs> and one of the wild things about being a parent is that, is that when you take your kids out in public, it kind of gives permission to other people's kids to come over and hang out. You always get these weird kids. Like, if you're at the park, it's always the strange, sticky kids that come over too. It's never a clean, snatchable kid that comes over. <laughs> and they always arrive and say dumb shit to her. They'll walk up and be like, my brother's really tall. <laughs> my dad's a plumber. I can't find my mum. It's like, fuck off. 
I had the perfect moment to get rid of one of these kids though recently. We were down at the beach and he just wouldn't go away and then all of a sudden the shark siren went off. <laughs> and he got all nervous and he goes, oh, what does that mean? And I went, mate, that means the first one in the water gets a prize. So, <laughs> It was incredible because as he was running towards the water, his dad and I locked eyes. And in that moment, the dad realised that the real predator was not in the ocean. <laughs> Fuck, you, you do with fuckhead kids everywhere though. Like one thing that's, that's a place that I have to regularly go with my boy is the skate park. The skate park just brings out punchable children. <laughs> but the best thing about the skate park is the kids that are assholes, there's a good chance they might grievously injure themselves too. <laughs> One of my favourite things to do is just give them a little bit of extra confidence. You know, encourage them to do something they're not skilled enough for. Like last time we were there, there was this boy who pushed my son and as we were leaving, we, I walked past the kid and I said, you know what mate, I reckon you're ready for a backflip. <laughs> and as we were driving home, we passed an ambulance and I was like... I really hope I did that. Like, uh, and it was light snow siren, so it wasn't that bad anyway. Like that's... <laughs> My daughter, she likes to run around naked after the bath doing zoomies, and she likes to play a game where she hides in the same place in our house every single time. And I have to go looking for her. So the other night I was walking around the house looking for my kid, and I walk into the bedroom to find her, and she jumps out of the cupboard. She turns around, and she points back to where she was hiding and says, look, look, mummy, look. And I look down and in the cupboard amongst my wife's dresses is a good Sammy's bag, like a black bin bag full of clothes that she donates to the good Sammy's. And on the lip of the bag is a little nugget of poo. <laughs> so naturally, like any millennial, I pulled out my phone and said, oh, wow, let's take a photo. <laughs> My wife came running in and she said, what's going on, what's happened? And I said, our daughter wants to donate her shit to the Good Sammies too. I don't know if you can tell, but I've stopped ironing my shirts. Yeah, I notice the iron is just conversion therapy for your clothes. <laughs> Look, if they don't want to be straight, who am I to force them? <laughs> so I was at this gay bar the other day and this guy came up to me and he was like, you remind me of my bedside table. And I was like, oh yeah, why is that? And he said, because he wants to store his condoms in me while I'm inanimate. <laughs> yeah, I know, it took me by surprise too. Him wanting to get into a piece of furniture after spending so long coming out of the closet. <laughs> so I got caught on the, at the Bull Creek station. Got onto this, um, onto a train to Mandurah and um, on the train. And there was this little girl in front of me on the seat, just sitting there and she was looking at me and she was going, on the seat going, and it was really nice that she was doing that, and I was, uh, I was enjoying that she was doing that. Um, obviously not enjoying it too much. <laughs> otherwise you go to jail. Um, but I can't just ignore her, otherwise she'll grow up and have mental issues. Right. So every time I look from here to here, I kind of went, ah, and then looked away. <laughs> Which is way creepier, I realise. <laughs> so much creepier so I just decided I just look at the floor I guess <laughs> and then about 30 seconds later she puts her finger right in my face about this close right she starts tapping her dad and this is what she says she goes daddy 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 what's that <laughs> yeah which is obviously <laughs> very awkward um, a full carriage of people as well at that point just leaned in <laughs> just overall vibe of whatever happens next is going to be awesome so let's all pay attention. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know what to do in that situation, right? Like, I can't just punch her. <laughs> but I guess if I did, I guess if I did, she literally wouldn't know what hit her. <laughs> so, <laughs> wouldn't be able to describe me to the police. <laughs> Something hit me. Well, we can't really help you with that, ma'am. It's obviously a tough situation for the dad to take in, and so, so he paused for quite a while, and, and I wondered in my head, like, does he not know? <laughs> and then he said to her, he said to her, that, that is a man. And I nodded. <laughs> because I am. 
And then it was fine. Um, and then about a minute later, security guard comes onto the carriage, starts checking everyone's ticket, checking everyone's ticket, checking everyone's ticket, right? And he's dark skinned as well, right? And then she looks at him, looks at me, looks back at her dad, <laughs> and looks at him, looks at me, looks back at her dad, and looks back at her dad, so happy your dad again and says, Daddy, 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 look, he's like him and he's like him. <laughs> right? To which the security guard heard this, stopped what he was doing, looked over to me and smiled, looked over to her dad and smiled, and then just walked up to the little girl and then just punched her in the face. 